Your Fire Eye is one of the most fun new Pokemon from Gen 9 that gets access to multiple insanely strong strategies. Its ability Unburdened doubles your speed stat if you use your held item. You combo this with the move Swagger, and you can literally double your speed and attack in one turn. The item Mirror Herb is a new held item that was introduced in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that copies the opposing Pokemon stat changes. We give them the old swagger, steal a boost, use the item, and Grafai is ready to sweep. We can take it a step further by pairing it with the move Acrobatics. This is a 55 base power flying move that doubles if the user has used a held item. We can tie it all together with Terra Flying to not only dodge super effective ground attacks, but also increase the stab on Acrobatics, and this thing goes crazy. Alright, listen to me very closely. Sometimes, you just gotta bring some little guys. We're going up against a team here that is full of overused Pokemon, and I've got myself some forgotten little fellas here that I just really felt like using. Hey, if you're into that type of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k, and the support is greatly appreciated. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Rabone B, and I have myself a wooden ball. So, the B is honestly kind of annoying, mostly because what people are doing with these things lately is they lead with them, they can go for Sticky Web, uh, they often can Quiver Dance, and overall just an annoying little thing. So, I go for the Volt Switch here, with the Choice Specs, I'm actually able to get a huge amount of damage. That's the good news, the bad news is, I do not have anything to be able to get rid of the Sticky Web, which I know is essentially coming. So. It's looking like it's going to be even more of an uphill battle because I'm going to have to deal with the, the webs just being around. But I bring in the Heracross, and the reason for that is because I come in before the Sticky Web gets activated, and I am Choice Scarf, so I know I can outspeed. I can finish it off with the close combats, and I don't have to deal with the B anymore, uh, which is good. I'm essentially trading one Pokemon for them setting up the Sticky Web. And also, what that's going to do is activate Heracross's Moxie. So now, it's going to put a little bit of pressure on them, knowing that I am a Choice Scarf Heracross here. With that attack boost, they have to essentially... Uh, kind of bring in their answer for that, and that is going to be the Mandibuzz. So, this is a defensive little Vulture Bastard that can definitely take a plus one close combat, so I don't really want to sacrifice the Heracross at this point. So, I'm actually just going to go right back into the Electrode. Listen, Hisuian Electrode is one of the greatest things ever. It now has answers to ground-type switch-ins, and is such a fun Pokemon with the choice specs. It has so much speed that even with the Sticky Web up, I can outspeed a lot of their team. And uh, with Choice Specs attacks, it can do a lot of damage. So they go for the Brave Bird there. That does do around half, but it also is going to activate my static. So you shouldn't have touched my balls, and now you're paralyzed, baby. So listen, the Electrode is in a great position here. I can actually predict them to go into their ground type in the form of the Great Tusk and go for the Chloroblast, which is exactly what I do. Expecting them to bring in the Tusk, they actually, actually instead go into the Gudra. So... Unfortunately, Gudra comes in, but I actually missed the Chloroblast, and that's actually kind of a lucky miss. It's like a 10% chance, but when you use Chloroblast, you actually used 50% of your health. So getting the miss there was actually kind of clutch, and uh, I appreciate it. He has his choice specs on, but apparently can't see shit anyway. And I can't stay in being locked into the Chloroblast, so I'm just going to bring out my three little friends here. They got their hair just flowing in the wind, looking luscious. As this damn Snail Gudra is going to go for the Shelter, so that is going to give him a sharp boost in defense, and as, as if this thing didn't already have enough defense. Uh, the Dugtrio is kind of my best answer to get super effective attacks off on this thing. I go for that Earthquake, but after the defense boost, it's not even a two-hit KO, and they actually just have the Earthquake to hit me with in return, and uh, down goes the greatest hair in the game. So I was able to get at least a little bit of chip damage off on the Gudra. Um, and this thing is also leftover, so it's got the recovery, and this thing is actually a damn problem. Literally one of the most annoying current Pokemon to go up against because of, you know, this thing's insane defenses. But I actually have a pretty good answer in the form of a Sandcastle. I have the Sandy Ghast looking shiny and amazing. This forgotten Pokemon is actually pretty good and honestly really fun to use. It's a great answer for me here against the Gudra, uh, because I know I can take physical attacks all day. Listen, I am max HP and max defense. I'm actually also holding the Culber Berry. Oftentimes, people will go for a knockoff against this thing, and that's going to weaken Dark-type damage. That's actually going to come in clutch later, keep that in mind. However, I am just going to set up my Stealth Rock here. I want to try to punish switches as much as possible. Plus, I know this thing can't touch me. I can always shore up the damage if I need to. And at this point, I can actually just go for the Earth Power. I need to hit this thing on the specially defensive side, uh, as, just because of that shelter. It has so much physical defense, but... Uh, I'm able to do a good chunk with that Earth Power, and they're really not able to do anything. Max Defense Sandy Gas, people do not expect, but the bulk is real, I swear to God. So, uh, I'm going to go for the Shadow Ball this turn. I expect they probably switch into uh, something that doesn't, uh, yeah, they can just dodge the Earth Power, as they do, of course, just go into the Mandibuzz. This thing does come in, takes that Stealth Rock damage, which is exactly why uh, we do want to set that type of thing up. 
And while we are able to hit it with the Shadow Ball, it's going to do pretty much nothing. So, I'm in a situation here where I kind of need to conserve the Sandy Gast for the Gudra. I've done a lot of actual chip to it, so I'm happy with what I was able to do. And at this point, it's time to bring in the Absolute Goat. This thing comes in and says, bitch, phone home. We are about to do some finger painting, and it's going to get crazy. I honestly see a pretty decent opening for a Grafii to have a great matchup here. So, I come in, and keep in mind, I do get caught up in the Sticky Web, which reduces my speed, but... If we can get this thing going, it can actually still be fast. So, they're going to end up switching out the Mandibuzz, and they're going to go right back into the Gudra. Great defensive option against something like a Poison type. However, I was able to get so much chip on this thing that uh, I should be in a good spot. So, I can go for the Swagger. That is going to give them a nice little sharp attack boost. I'm talking plus two, throw the ducks around your head, and I say, mm, yeah, actually, let me have that. I got my mirror in my pocket. The herb is going to also give me that attack boost while also activating my Unburden because I used my item. And now we are sitting very fast and able to hit extremely hard with that attack boost. So, uh, even though this thing is quite defensive, I'm just gonna go right for that knockoff. A stab knockoff should be enough to take care of the Gudra. Does not quite have a shelter up yet. And down goes their best defensive answer to the Grafii, and we are feeling good at this point. I did not want to commit my Terra Flying at this point yet, because I want to save it for something like this little fella. In comes the Great Tusk, who is looking quite menacing to a little uh, little painted monkey over here, but I am going to go ahead and commit that Flying Terra. If this thing is something like a Choice Scarf set that can outspeed me and go for the Earthquake, I want to ensure that I am in the air before it's able to do so. But... Uh, with my Unburden activated, if it's not Scarf, I actually still just outspeed it. So, I go for the Flying Terra here to basically cover for it, and essentially also give me more damage for my Acrobatics. I am able to actually outspeed, and the Acrobatics boosted with the Stab, plus the having no item, and the plus two attack that is going to take out the Great Tusk. And it is not every day you see a Great Tusk go down to the Grafii, so... We got a little kill streak going, I'm talking UAV fucking inbound, and now they decide to go into the Rotom Wash. So, this is still a defensive answer to the Grafii, and now that I've had to commit my Flying Terra, I am going to be weak to that electric attack. So, I go for the knockoff here, I knock off his choice specs, and it ends up going for the trick. Without an item, it's actually not able to go for that trick, which is honestly insane. And now, I can just finish this thing off with a Poison Jab. They tried to trick me the choice specs, basically limiting what the Grafii can do. And that could not have worked out better. The most clutch knockoff of all time, and the Grafii is rolling out here. So, now in comes the Mandibuzz. We know this thing is, of course, going to be defensive enough to take an attack. Uh, but it comes down to the point where it likely isn't going to be able to knock me out in one hit. Plus, it's also paralyzed. So, I go for that Acrobatics. Not quite enough to knock it out, as I do get hit with some Rocky Helmet. And I end up going for the Toxic, which actually misses. So, E.T is straight up dodging threats over here, and that's actually kind of crazy. So, I can finish this thing off with one more acrobatics, but the fact is we are not out of the woods yet. They're trying to play towards their win condition, which is going to be one of the scariest Pokemon in the metagame right now, which is the Roaring Moon. So, their final Pokemon is, of course, that Roaring Moon. So this thing comes in. It is flying high, looking quite menacing over there, as it is going to activate its booster energy. That's going to give it Protosynthesis and give it a nice little speed boost. So, uh, this thing is certainly faster than me at this point, and they also have not committed their Terra, which they are going to go for right now. So, I go for the Acrobatics. I essentially just need to get some chip on this thing. The Roaring Moon is a huge threat, and if it starts to set up, I can very well just lose against this Mon. So, they actually end up going for the Terra Steel, which is worst case scenario, because it's now able to get up a free Dragon Dance, and with the Axe on its head, it's going to allow it to live the Acrobatics. And now this thing has plus two speed, plus one attack, and is going to be one of the craziest things to deal with. So, I go for that Acrobatics, even through the Steel Terra, able to do a ton of damage. And what that does is, puts this thing into chip range, where I'm thinking, hey, hold on, there's actually, there's a shot here, and it's not going to be what you think. So, they go for the Iron Head, of course, able to outspeed and easily just knock me out. And, uh, again, Roaring Moon, one of the scariest Pokemon in the game. Uh, I'm really wishing I still had my Sucker Punch Dug Trio, but the only answer I possibly have to this thing is going to come in the form of, a sand castle. <laughs> the pocket sand is my only full-on defensive Pokemon, and if there's anything that can live it, it is this. Plus, if I can put myself on a silver platter and look like I really want to get hit with a dark type move, which would trigger my Colber Berry, and I can easily live. So, all I have to do is go for the Earth Power here. They do end up going for the Jaw Lock. That is going to activate the Colber Berry, which is insane, and Palace Sand is just barely able to live it. Thank you to the Berry. And now I can get off the Earth Power, and since you are Steel type, that is going to take care of the Roaring Moon. So, honestly, one of the most insane sequences of all time. This Roaring Moon was sitting in the back being a threat the entire time. And the Sandcastle is all you need, baby. Let's go. 
super fun match. It's always fun to, to try to see if I can get these teams to work, especially against some really high tier stuff. So thank you guys very much for watching. As always, I do really appreciate all the support on these videos. And uh, leave a comment and let me know what you guys want to see next. And I uh, will see you next time. Peace out.